Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to episode 44. We've just gotten back from Goblin Territory, so let's head into Dornan and collect our pay. You enter Duke Dietmar von Eisenstein's room and drop a few goblin heads on the floor. He glances at them. Huh, they're actually a lot bigger than the scribes tell. With a few words, you report the destruction of the Greenskins encampment. The noble nods, rubbing his chin. Excellent. Your pay, as promised. Well, that takes care of some hard-fought battles and earns us some hard-won coin. And there are a couple of additional contracts available here in Dorne, and we'll probably take that noble contract. But first, let's go ahead and buy a round of drinks for the men. And, uh... Huh. I guess there's not really much to do in Dornan, so let's check out that contract. A messenger, a young lad about as tall as a longsword, sprints by you, throwing a scroll in the air as he swings past. You catch it, but by the time you can look for the kid, he's already gone. Shrugging, you open the scroll and find the name of Duke Remar von Eisenstein. He appears to be in need of your services. Directions to a nobleman's house tag the bottom of the scroll. Duke Remar von Eisenstein grins slyly. What say I give you a task where you're not paid just for doing it, but paid for how many heads you can collect? Does that prospect interest you? Because right now I need the lands to Gronenberg and Newfarn patrolled. You take a stroll, kill things here and there, and then return to me within seven days with whatever heads you've collected. I will pay you for those you kill. Let me know what you think. Well, I'm certainly not going to turn down a patrol mission. The pay looks... reasonable. So, let's go ahead and uh, accept the offer and begin our patrol. Now, I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but these are actually some of my favorite types of missions. It basically just gives you an excuse to wander the countryside picking fights and getting paid for it. But of course, before we start our patrol, we need to sell off all this loot here, so we'll be right back. And we're back. We've been wandering along the road towards Gronenberg, and we've already encountered our first pack of wandering monsters. Looks like more goblins, a few goblin ambushers, and many goblin wolf riders. We've certainly got experience fighting this kind of thing, so I don't anticipate that we're going to have any problems here. Though the fact that this fight is taking place in the middle of the night might complicate things a little. Okay, it looks like the bulk of the goblin wolf riders are rushing our front line. I can certainly live with that. Our archers are going to be heavily handicapped by the darkness, but hopefully they can land at least a few hits. Speaking of which, Potato just doled out a piercing chest wound. Alright, Rowan is up. Let's see if... Oh, nice! Rowan puts a crossbow bolt into a goblin wolf rider's leg and sends him reeling back into a tree. Woe lashes out and pierces a goblin rider's shoulder with his pike. Ariton puts his dagger through a rider's neck. Reinhard moves up, pressing the assault against one of the badly wounded wolf riders. And Kazarin is up, quickly dropping a rider's wolf, and then felling the dismounted rider as well. Rondis plunges his blade through a rider's shoulder, follows up by killing his wolf, and then swiftly dispatches the rider. Well, we're definitely making good time here. <laughs> Janos finishes off another wolf. And Belfontan is up. He goes after one of the broken wolf riders, kills the rider's wolf. Okay, yeah, we uh, took out, I think, a net total of three wolf riders there. And we haven't seen any sign of those goblin ambushers yet. Here comes another wave of wolf riders. Judging from the angles they're coming at us from, I'm guessing that they were trying to flank us, but have since changed their minds. Wajtek moves up and fires through the ranks. But no luck there. Alessandro... Hmm. Will maneuver a little bit, but he can't draw a line of sight. Potato fires through the ranks. No hits. Mark Richards moves around Potato and puts an arrow through a rider's arm. Rowan's already reloaded and ready to go, so he moves up. He could probably finish off that broken rider, but I guess he should focus on the more immediate threat. 
Oh, and he plants a crossbow bolt in the rider's chest, sending him reeling backwards. Woe fells another wolf with his pike. Bill Fontana is up, but I'm a little hesitant to move him forward because that might put him within range of the ambushers. I guess we'll chance it. He moves up and engages the skirmisher and quickly finishes him with a spear thrust. Heraton moves up right after him, killing another rider. Reinhard moves up to engage one of the last wolf riders. But his attacks don't quite get through his armor. Rondus moves up to engage another wolf rider, swapping off to his greatsword, but he can't make contact. Kazarin lands a light hit against the same rider. Janos engages the rider on our north, draws his great hammer, and crushes the rider to death with one mighty swing. The ambushers finally make an appearance, but they can't get past our shields. Our archers move up, though. I'm not sure they'll really be able to do much here. Janos takes a light ding from a bloodied wolf. And round three. Hmm, a skirmisher on the south takes off half of Woe's armor. The ambushers bounce an arrow off of Janos's armor. Ooh, okay. Woe just took a nasty hit. His ear's been torn halfway off. That reduces his initiative, but otherwise it's not so bad. Wajtek drops another wolf. Takes a few pot shots at the ambushers, but doesn't have any luck there. Mark drops a skirmisher that's threatening Woe. Potato puts an arrow through the face of the last goblin wolf rider, kills his wolf, and then kills the rider. Nicely done, Potato. Rowan still needs to reload, so I don't think he can do much this turn, but... Yeah, unfortunately he can't reach the... Uh ambushers, but he'll move up a little. Now the rest of our frontliners will start rushing those ambushers. I might resort to unleashing the war dog so we can run these guys down. Oh, never mind. Reinhardt engages them. That keeps two of the ambushers locked down, and apparently we do have a third foe somewhere out in the fog of war, but... Wherever they are, they're probably fleeing at this point, so we're almost certainly not going to catch up with them. We'll keep Woe back here in the bushes where it's safe, and time to move into round four. Looks like the ambushers are trying to flee. Oh, one of them is trying to flee. The other one takes a swipe at Reinhard with his dagger. The archers aren't going to be much help now, so let's pull them back. And the frontliners will just swarm these guys. Rowan moves up. He's reloaded and ready to go, so... He lands yet another hit, putting a bolt through the ambusher's leg and sending him flying backwards. Belfontan quickly moves up to engage. But he's not experienced enough to do the old quick hand swap just yet. Reinhard re-engages the injured ambusher, fells him with a swift spear strike, then engages the other fleeing ambusher. Kazarin stays where he is, Woe stays where he is. All the archers stay where they are. Oh, but Belfontan will continue moving up. And Janos. I think Janos can still move. Yeah. Alright, let's go ahead and run down this last ambusher and... That'll be another head for the head bag. There we go. Belfontan is up. He leapfrogs past Reinhard. Takes off all of the ambushers' armor in one swipe. Araton starts moving up, but doesn't engage. Rondus moves up, but... Hmm. Yeah, we'll go ahead and let him engage. Reinhardt is up. He puts his spear through the ambusher's hand and kills him with a follow-through. A nice, quick, easy fight, aside from that uh, minor injury on Woe there. Kasserin is up to level 12. Potato is up to level 11. And Araton hits level 5. No clear-cut MVP this time. Uh, a lot of people tied at two kills. And no appreciable loot, so... 
let's take care of some quick inventory and line management, and we'll get back on patrol. And we're back. Once again on our patrol route, we've stumbled across some rampaging goblin hunters, and this particular group of ambushers is being particularly aggressive, trying to chase us down, even though we almost outnumber them two to one, so... Let's get in there and teach them a lesson real quick. I will admit we still need to be careful here. As we've seen in the past, goblin ambushers can quickly dole out some nasty injuries with those poisoned boondock bows of theirs. But let's see if we can trim down their numbers a little with a bit of our own archery. No luck with Wajtek. Alessandro takes a shot. But he can't land a hit either. Box is up. Still no hit. And Bunny. Hmm. Well, neither side hit anyone. And thus our epic battle has begun. We'll go ahead and start rushing them since they don't have any frontliners to slow us down. Our pikemen lead the way. Quickly followed by our actual heavily armored shield men and whatnot. Now, I do expect these ambushers to start a fighting withdrawal as soon as round two starts. These guys aren't the sorts for a stand-up fight unless they're forced into it. In fact, they're already starting their fighting withdrawal. Round two. Ooh, and... Sergeant Baggins takes a poisoned arrow. We'll have to pull him back. Fortunately, he's got that tree nearby. Yeah, unfortunately, I think this is pretty much going to be the whole fight. Us advancing on these guys and them slowly retreating to the exit zone. We'll see if we can kill at least half of them before they get away, but I'm not too optimistic here. They move exactly as fast as we do. Oh, right, uh... Let's get the sergeant behind this tree here. And let's split up our line. Half of them will go after the goblins on the south. Half will go after the goblins on the north. I got might actually... Yeah, there we go. I got locks one of them down. Reinhard comes around the tree, but can't quite reach his own goblin. Uh, Kazarin will start heading south towards that one lone ambusher. Rondus will move up to back up Roderick. Janos will kind of straggle behind because of that unfortunate foot injury of his. Our archers aren't going to be able to contribute much here, so we'll just have them hang back. Oh, and uh, that goblin just pierced Rondus' side. Right, their daggers can ignore armor on some shots. That's unfortunate. Rondus is now poisoned and slightly handicapped by that crippling wound. I guess I really should have taken this fight more seriously. Okay, well, for now we'll just continue doing what we're doing. Roderick moves up and locks down another ambusher. Vlad pierces an ambusher's shoulder. Kazarin moves down to engage another ambusher and quickly takes off half of his helmet with a dagger swipe. I got finishes off his badly wounded foe, pushes up into the bushes to stab a second ambusher in the neck. Rondis quickly gets revenge on the gloating goblin that just stabbed him by lopping off his head in one swing. Reinhard chases after another goblin. And our ambushers hold steady. Okay, we've... Oh, the uh, ambusher on Reinhard decided to stop fleeing. He actually held his ground and took a shot. Pretty boldly countercharging now. Good for them. I'm sure that will go very well for them. Oh, okay, well, clearly I spoke too soon because we've got another serious injury down there. And now Kazarin saddled with a piercing hand injury. Roderick... Returns the favor, piercing a hand, and then slaying the goblin attached to it. Vlad moves up to support Reinhard. 
Despite the poison and the hand injury, Kazarin keeps fighting valiantly. Reinhard moves up to lock down another ambusher, but can't land a hit. Igot doesn't have that problem. He easily fells another foe, moves up to engage another goblin, and crushes it with his great axe. Janos and Rondus begin moving to support Kazarin. The archers hold their ground, and round five. The ambusher on Kazarin takes a few swipes, but can't land any hits. Vlad finishes off the second-to-last ambusher on our north. And all of the brothers begin converging on that last ambusher on the south. All right, Kazarin. Better make this quick before any of the other brothers can steal your glory. Ooh, so close. Kazarin whittles down his foe, puts a spear through his arm, but can't quite finish him off. And round six. Kazarin might get one more chance to finish off his opponent before someone else has to do it for him. Oh, Rondus is up, but he can't quite land the hit. Misses with the dagger swipe, too, so that means Kazarin gets another shot. And he handily dispatches the goblin despite his hand injury. Hmm, that was definitely a bit rough considering how easy the fight should have been. Two of our best fighters have been saddled with crippling wounds, and we didn't even get any real decent loot here. But at least that's seven more heads for the head bag, and... Now it's time to go looking for another fight. Okay, I'm starting to think that the goblins might have taken that little raid into goblin territory uh, a bit personally, because here's our third group of goblin raiders, and uh, this is a pretty sizable crew. I made sure to swap in some of our best fighters for this one, but we've still got a few injured brothers going into this, so hopefully things won't go badly. These guys came gunning for us as soon as they were on the map. And unfortunately, despite the fact that we're a smaller group, they actually caught up with us pretty quickly. But on the bright side, if we can finish these guys off, that should maximize our profits on this contract. Now the trick is seeing if we can finish this battle without losing another brother. All right, our archers are up, so let's see if we can start whittling down their number a bit. Wajtek puts an arrow through a rider's shoulder. Fox takes careful aim at the goblin battle line. Ooh, he misses his intended target, but his arrow still ends up through a rider's arm. Bunny misses her shot. And Potato's up. No luck there. Okay, since there are wolf riders in the mix, I think we're going to hold our ground for now. Normally, I'd start moving up on goblins pretty quickly, but we can't afford to risk having those riders disrupt in advance. Well, it looks like the wolf riders are holding their ground. Maybe the goblins feel that they have range superiority because they have five ambushers on the field. Yeah, they're definitely turtling up. Okay, I guess we can get into a bit of an archery battle here. Moving into round two. Yeah, you can see that the archers are moving up to get a better shot, and the wolf riders are already advancing to try to keep them covered. Ooh. Looks like Wajtek just took a poisoned arrow. That'll slow him down a little. But the rest of the arrows are being handily blocked by our shield line. Now our archers are coming up. And here's our chance to return fire. Fox takes aim. But he still can't land a shot. Bunny whiffs as well. Wajtek is poisoned, and Potato misses both of his quick shots. Well, 
This round did not go well for us. That's a slight win for the goblins. Alright, for the most part we're just going to be holding our ground for the rest of the turn. I don't think the goblins are going to be doing anything of note either, so... Yeah, it looks like everyone's just going to be passing until we get into round three. Alright, round three. Yet another barrage of poisoned arrows. Wajtek just took a second hit. Fortunately, poison doesn't stack. Unfortunately, he has now lost roughly half his hit points. So, as much as I'd like to keep him on the line where he can contribute, we are going to have to pull him back. Otherwise, one more arrow might kill him. It's a shame, because he's actually our second best shot right after Fox. None of the other goblin arrows got past our shield, so that means we get a chance to fire back again. Fox puts an arrow through a rider's arm. Bunny follows up by killing the rider's wolf. We'll come back to Wajtek. And Potato. Potato misses his shots, so not a great turn for us. We did manage to take out a wolf, but they also managed to badly wound one of our best archers, so I guess I'd call that a stalemate. Both sides are still holding their ground, so I guess we'll have to see what happens in round four when the arrows start flying again. Hmm, Wajtek. We'll risk holding him where he is for now. I could start moving him back, but with that poison in him, I'm worried that he wouldn't be able to get very far before the wolf riders flanked him, or an archer hopped forward and shot him down. Jeez. And that's arrow number three. We're definitely going to have to pull him back. There's just no helping it. I think he's actually got a pretty decent range defense, but they seem to have no trouble hitting him. Okay. Uh, there was a slight ding on Roderick's armor there, but otherwise we weathered that pretty well. Wajtek is up, so let's get him out of there. And now we need to try to distract them from going after our wounded member. Let's go ahead and start pushing up some of our frontliners. We're going to crash into their line and keep them occupied. Hmm, Henry's still a little beat up from the last fight, too. Well, let's push him up all the way and then we'll advance a shieldman in front of him. Our archers are up, so... Fox starts firing into the pikemen, since those are going to be potentially dangerous foes. He pierces the pikemen's leg and shoulder. Not a bad start. Let's also move Vlad up. I'll probably put him on this high ground here. But again, I have to worry... Oh man, there's three wolf riders up there. Yeah, I'm going to have to keep an eye on things here. Bunny's up. She'll keep firing at the same target. But she misses. Potato's up. He'll start firing into the goblin southern line. Nice. He puts an arrow through an ambusher's leg. Roderick will... Hmm. Stay where he is to keep our archers covered. Reinhard moves up with Vlad. In fact, he'll move all the way up to the front of this elevated terrain. Kazarin moves up in front of Sergeant Baggins. Rondis moves up alongside him. Jano starts advancing as well. projectiles and polearm strikes flying around now, but so far we've managed to fend them all off. Ooh, except for that one. There's a minor armor ding to Vlad, nothing to worry about. Vlad moves up using Reinhardt as cover. Rajik 
maneuvers a bit, providing Potato with some cover. And here come the Wolf Riders. One immediately moves around to flank Vlad. Another moves around to flank Sergeant Baggins. We've got one engaging Roderick. Another engaging Janos. And one coming right down the middle. Here comes another volley of poisoned arrows. And Bunny just took a hit. That's unfortunate. There's a minor armor ding on I got. A goblin pikeman moves up to engage Rondis. As does a goblin skirmisher. We've got more pike strikes incoming on Reinhard. And a few more bolas flying around. There's a ding on Rondis' armor. Wajtek keeps retreating into the bushes. Sergeant Baggins is up, so he'll focus on the wolf rider that's threatening him. He puts his banner through its chest, then switches off to his shield. Fox is up, so he'll provide the sergeant with some cover fire. He kills the rider's wolf. Then shifts his focus to the wolf rider on Vlad, but can't land any more hits. Bunny's up. She takes a quick shot despite the poison coursing through her veins and puts an arrow through a rider's hand. Potato follows up by killing the same rider's wolf. And then he carefully scans his available targets and puts another arrow through an approaching rider's chest. Roderick's up. He switches off to his warbrand, handily dispatches the badly wounded skirmisher in front of him. Vlad tears the ear off the wolf rider that's attacking him, then quickly grabs for his dagger, but misses the follow-through. Reinhard, rapidly tiring of being used for target practice, will move up to engage these two goblin pole armors. And, uh... Then he quickly fells one of them with a well-placed dagger strike. He chips away at the other one's armor, but can't quite get through it. Rondus is up. He grabs for his greatsword. Then kills one of his foes with a great arcing swing. Kazarin quickly takes advantage, moving in and killing another goblin skirmisher before advancing to press the assault on another. He swaps out to his dagger and... There we go. He drops a second skirmisher. Janos is up. He takes a quick swipe with his dagger, dinging a rider's armor. Then snaps the rider's leg like a twig with his great hammer. Igot holds his ground, and... Round six. Here come the ambushers. So far, so good. Oh, uh, what was that, I think? Someone just blocked an arrow. Kazarin, I guess. We've got another wolf rider moving up on Roderick and Potato. Rondis takes another light hit. Wajtek stays hiding in the bushes. Ooh, Vlad takes a nasty bleeding wound. Ooh, and then uh, his armor's gone and he's suffered a nasty leg wound. We've got to get him out of there. Henry draws his banner, drops a badly wounded skirmisher. Roderick turns his attention to the wolf rider next to him. Drops the, uh, there we go. He drops both the wolf and the rider with a quick flurry of dagger strikes. Vlad, badly wounded, continues to struggle against his foe. He kills the uh, rider's wolf. But can't land any other hit, so then he quickly grabs for his shield... Hmm, and he's still stuck there for the moment. Fox lays down some more cover fire. Switches off to his second quiver. And there we go. Vlad is now freed up, but he doesn't have any more action points, so he'll have to retreat next turn. Potato takes aim. Takes out the wolf on Janos. Then switches off to his second quiver. And drops the rider as well. He's too exhausted to take another shot, so now Bunny is up. 
There we go. Despite being poisoned, Bunny puts an arrow through another goblin pole armor's neck. Reinhard kills the pikeman that's threatening Vlad. Kazarin moves up to engage even more foes. Oof, everyone's getting exhausted here. Okay, Janos rushes into the thick of things, locking down two ambushers. Rondus is pretty banged up and he's close to exhaustion, but he still moves up to engage a pole armor, having just enough strength to decapitate him with one more swing. Uh, and someone just got killed. Kazarin the Aegis managed to kill a goblin skirmisher who was trying to flee. Nicely done. Henry moves up to continue supporting Kazarin. I got will now finally begin rushing into battle. We'll tuck him here so he can still provide cover for Fox. Roderick starts rushing forward as well. Bunny will stay where she is since she's lightly wounded. And round seven. Looks like the last unengaged ambusher is fleeing. And of course, Wajtek will stay in the bushes. Henry doles out a nasty leg wound, breaks a goblin's morale. I got rushes forward to join Reinhard in battle, but can't land a hit. Bunny's almost recovered from that poison, but she still misses her shot. Roderick moves up to finally engage. Swiftly decapitates an ambusher, then moves up to lock two more ambushers down. Fox moves up and quickly bandages Vlad before that bleeding can get any worse. Potato takes a moment to recover his breath. Jano swaps off to his dagger, pierces his foe's lungs. Kazarin drops another goblin, then begins pursuing the fleeing ambusher. Reinhard continues whittling down at another fleeing goblin. Vlad finally pulls back to safety. Ooh, that was definitely far closer than I would have liked. And, um, what was that? I got just killed the fleeing goblin skirmisher. Nicely done. Man, I'm not used to battles being this hectic. Okay, Henry moves up, slays the last goblin that we're engaged with, and the rest of our men continue pursuing the last two fleeing goblins. Roderick rushes forward, managing to lock down one of the ambushers. He switches off to his dagger, and then stabs it deep into the goblin's gut. I got starts moving up, but stops just short enough to unleash Blaze, his war dog. Blaze quickly pushes the gut-stabbed goblin to death's doorstep. Fox moves up. Rondis moves up. Janos moves up. Kazarin ignores the badly wounded goblin next to him. Instead moving up to, uh... Oh no, he doesn't have enough fatigue to unleash his own war dog. Reinhard moves up. Vlad stays where he is. There we go. Roderick puts down a fleeing goblin with a quick dagger strike. And the last ambusher makes it safely off the board. Well, I guess it was bound to happen. Looks like Vlad's got some cut leg muscles. That's definitely going to get him stuck in reserve for the better part of a week. But at least Wajtek managed to hit level 10. Goodness knows he certainly earned it. And the loot's about as mediocre as you'd expect, but we've got a little space in our inventory, so I'll handle the loot management off-screen, and we'll finish up our patrol contract next time. Hey, Retcon Raider here. And wow, I was not expecting us to have to fight so hard on a two-skull contract. I guess it just goes to show that you can never lower your guard in a game like Battle Brothers. 
We've officially made our quota for the current patrol contract, and we'll be collecting a decent-sized stack of coins once we get back to Dornan, but we definitely had to work for it. At this point, I think almost a third of our men are saddled with crippling injuries, including some of our heavies like Rondus and Kazarin. That means that once we've turned in this contract, we're going to need to head to a town with a temple so we can get these wounds properly treated. After that, I think we'll shop around for a slightly easier contract, just so we can give the raiders some time to recover. Honestly, it's amazing that we didn't actually end up losing anyone, because we came pretty close to it in every single one of today's battles. Vlad, Wo, and Wojtek definitely got lucky, because all three of them were pushed to the brink of death, but they each managed to pull back at the very last moment. Now, I know we've got a dozen eager recruits waiting in the wings, ready to step up and replace any raider who happens to get cut down in battle, but you know how it is. I've gotten pretty attached to our current band of marauding misfits, so I'd hate to lose even one of them. At any rate, we've still got the long walk back to Dornan ahead of us, so we'd better get moving. This is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for watching. Oh, and remember... Although I do love playing Battle Brothers, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website or the Fan Run Wiki. Links are in the description.